In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to generate custom height maps from Terrain Party and these height maps are going to be based on real world locations. And this entire tutorial will be focused on getting them into UE4. Now there are a few things you need to know to make these height maps work and a few limitations that Terrain Party places on these height maps, specifically to their size. And I'm going to show you how to deal with these limitations and how to overcome them. So let's begin. First, what is Terrain Party? Terrain Party is a website that can generate and export height map texture data for most of the locations in the world, which then you can use to create landscapes in UE4. So you want to go to terrain.party and the default location will be in Finland. This square right here, this is where the height map data will be sampled from. And whatever is inside the square, this will be your height map texture. Now you can left click hold and drag the square anywhere in the world depending where you want to get that height map data from. And we'll do this in a bit. We'll drag this somewhere else. You can zoom in and zoom out to get closer to what you're looking at by using the mouse wheel, scrolling forward and back or using the minus and plus icons to zoom in. We can also take a look at different map views. The default is OpenStreetMap as what we see right now but we can switch it to shaded relief or topographic imagery. And we can't see it here because it's not covered in all parts of the world. But this won't prevent you from actually downloading a height map texture where shaded relief or topographic imagery not available. This is just a map view to help you see the terrain data better. So I'm going to reposition the square somewhere else. I'm going to left click hold and drag and let's go to Alaska. There's a lot of mountains and valleys and a lot of interesting terrain that we can generate from there. So here if I go to map view and change it to shaded relief or topographic imagery, it will give us a sense of what we're looking at better. So I'm going to use shaded relief and find something interesting. That looks pretty interesting to me. And we can use the plus and the minus icons here to increase or decrease the sampled square from which the height map will be generated from. And this will give us a larger square kilometer size for the sampled area. So I'm going to make it larger. Now a very important note, increasing the size of the square to higher kilometers will not give you a larger height map with those actual dimensions. It will give you the same width and height texture data. And I will show you what that means in a bit. And once you like the coverage area, let's go ahead and export it. Click on this icon right here. A menu will pop up and you want to name this. Then click OK and then save. This will begin to download the zip file. Once downloaded, let's go ahead and extract. And we can delete the zip file. So inside this folder you will have multiple height maps and the one that gives you the best results is the merged version. This is the one you want to use to import into UE4. So I'm going to go ahead and move it out of this folder, paste it here and rename it. Now here's the important part. No matter what size you generate, what kilometer size, Terrain Power will give you the same dimensions regardless of the sampled area. It will be 1081 by 1081 in width and height. So that's one of downsides of using Terrain Party to generate height maps and you cannot have a larger height map size. However, it is 16 bit and ready to be used. All right, so let's go ahead and import this height map into UE4 and see what happens. I'm going to use the time of day map template that comes with UE4. Then let's switch over to landscape mode, shift 2 in 4.25 or later, or shift 3 in 4.24 and earlier. I'm gonna import from file, enable edit layers, then let's browse for our height map file. So go into the folder where you downloaded the merged height map from Terrain Party. Go ahead, open it. All the settings will be set by UE4 to what Unreal Engine 4 thinks is best. So I'm not gonna change anything here and I'm going to click import. Here we are. Let's go ahead and spawn inside the map. 
and it's looking pretty good. And we haven't adjusted anything other than downloaded the height map and imported it as is into UE4. Now the height of this height map is often too much. So you may want to change scale Z of your landscape, of your terrain, to a lower number. So select the landscape, go into the details panel, and change scale Z to a lower value below 100. So I'm going to set it to 50. And this looks better. Now when you import a height map from Terrain Party without making any adjustments to it, at its current size, you will get these stretched out areas around your terrain. And this is because 1081 by 1081 is not the correct dimensions to use for UE4. So UE4 has to compensate and make this size correct by stretching out pixels around the parameter of your terrain. And you have two ways of fixing this. So if you don't have Photoshop, or you don't want to go an extra step to resize the dimensions of the height map. During the import of your height map, you simply remove one number of components from 18 to 17. And then when you import it, this will cut off that part and not stretch out the rest of the terrain. So this is one way of fixing it. Now, like I said, 1081 by 1081 are not correct dimensions for UE4. And to make the current height map use the right dimensions, you have to resize it down. So the second way to make this height map work in UE4 is to resize the height map to the recommended landscape size. And this is what I usually do. So open the height map in Photoshop, and I'm going to resize it down to 1009 by 1009. These dimensions I got from the Epic's recommended landscape sizes chart, and that's this value right here and 1009 is the closest to 1081. So I'm going to quickly save this height map. And now if I import this, this will perfectly work and we will not get those stretched out edges. So whichever option you use is up to you. And I usually use the second option. So I have the correct height map texture size to begin with. Now, the second issue with Terrain Party height maps is they are currently using the full black to white value scale. So you see here, we have these black parts and these white parts. And when it comes to height maps, if you were to paint anything below in this area that you wanted to lower in your landscape, you won't be able to do so because you cannot go lower than black. So if I paint and lower the height map, I can do so because we've reached our limit. We have reached our lowest parts of the height map. And the same thing will happen if we try to paint anything higher than white. We won't be able to do so because this height map already has that limit capped. So it's not a big deal if you don't need to paint anything lower or higher. But if you do, then you need to make an adjustment to your height map. To do this is very simple. And I got this tip from Olivier, W-O-L-D, insider email subscriber. So here's what you do. I'm gonna duplicate the layer so I don't mess anything with the original. Then I'm gonna adjust levels on this image. I'm gonna press Ctrl L and change the output levels. I'm gonna push the blacks a bit closer so they're more gray. I'm gonna change this to 50 and I'm gonna lower the whites also towards the grays and change it to 200. These values will depend on your height map. But this way we'll have the information to lower and to raise a height map, instead of having it to use the entire black to white range. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. Then I'm going to go ahead and re-import this height map. And because we've changed the entire value range, our height map is not as intense anymore. So I'm going to change the scale Z value of the landscape and increase it to 75. And now if I begin to paint and lower the height map, we can do so, as well as we can raise it, because we have that information now. Well, let's get back and cover the sizes and the different square kilometer dimensions that you can get from Terrain Party. So this sampling square, you can make it smaller or you can make it larger. And you can go from 8 square kilometers all the way up to 60. 
But one thing you should know is the output is always going to be the same. You will have 1081 by 1081 height map, regardless of the sample size height map that you download. So here I quickly generated four different height maps at 8 kilometers, 16 kilometers, 32, and 60. And I went ahead and extracted everything and moved all the merged PNG files and placed them all together. So you didn't have to see me do that. And these are the four height maps that I would use. And you can see we sampled different amount of information depending on the square size that we chose. 8, 16, 32, or 60. But each height map dimension is the same. 1081 by 1081. This means that inside UE4, all of them will be the same size. And there is no option to generate a larger height map. So you are stuck with dimensions of 1081 by 1081. Now there is a bit of a hack that I found where you could generate larger size height maps. It does require a bit of work and it doesn't always produce good results. It's a hit or miss, but you could do this. And I have made it work. So what you would do is you would generate four different height maps and then stitch them together. So for example, you would start one here, download it, then drag the square right next to where you just generated the previous one and slowly overlap it. So you have some repeating information just on the edges. Then download it, then drag it down, again slowly overlapping it with the previous one. Download this one, then drag it over here and download this one. So you would end up having four different height maps, each at 1081, and then you would have to stitch them together. Here is an example I already completed. And these are the four height maps I downloaded. I would then create a new document, make it twice the size. So I would probably use 2017 by 2017 in width and height. So they fall into the recommended landscape chart sizes using 16 bit and grayscale, and then try to match them up and stitch them together while making some adjustments. So they all blend and make them look like one height map. So basically you generate four height maps and then you bring them all together and try to stitch them together. So here's my final result. This height map consists of the four height maps that I downloaded. And I had to do some heavy level adjustments to make them blend between each other. And let's push this a little further. I'm gonna duplicate the layer so I don't mess anything up. And I'm gonna adjust levels, control L. And I'm gonna push the blacks and the white values so we have more gray and it doesn't use the entire black and white range. So this way we can sculpt the valleys and the mountains if we want to, which is the trick I showed you before. And then I want to resize this. The size that I stitched all the height maps together was 2048 by 2048. So I want to lower this to 2017 by 2017, which is the Epic's recommended landscape size from this chart. And now I'm going to export and let's take a look. Let's import our height map. I'm going to reset everything to default prior to importing because we are importing a different and new size. And let's import this height map. And you can see here our overall resolution is 2017 by 2017, which is going to be double the size of the landscape and what Terrain Party allows you to download. I'm going to go ahead and lower scale Z to make it more real and more manageable. And here we are. We have a height map that's just a bit over two kilometers, double the size of the default height map from Terrain Party. So this is a great option to use, but sometimes it's not worth the trouble to go through because it will take a bit of work and it's not as easy as just downloading them and then bringing them together. You will have to make a lot of adjustments so they blend seamlessly. And for the last tip, Here's how to find better locations to gather height map data from in Terrain Party. So you might have a real world location you want to get the height map data from. But when you look at the map, it's hard to figure out if this is a good area to sample from. So you could switch to shaded relief or topographic imagery, and that does help. But it's still not enough. 
and I found a better way to actually find a location in the real world in 3D and take a look at it if you want to gather information from that area. So for this I use Google Maps, specifically the 3D view. And as a side note, I do have a tutorial, 11 secrets for level design and game environment ideas, layouts and reference with Google Maps 3D. This tutorial will give you more in-depth information on how to use Google Maps 3D to gather ideas, layouts, and reference. So here is how this works. In Terrain Party, I find the location, the area, where I'm trying to get the height map data from. So for example, this is a general location in Alaska, right along the coast. And then in Google Maps, I'm trying to find that same area. So this may take a little bit of time depending on where you're looking at, but it's usually pretty quick after you get familiar with where you are at. And then inside Google Maps, I switch over to satellite, zoom in a little closer, and if you hold down shift and left mouse click and move the mouse, you enter into 3D view. And you can also use the scroll wheel, scroll it forward to zoom in. And I find the mountains or the location or whatever I'm looking at inside Google Maps first. And this allows me to take a look at 3D view and determine if this is the location, the height map I want to generate. And then I go back into Terrain Party. Sometimes it helps to switch over to topographic imagery so you can see the same kind of data that you saw in Google Maps. And then once you have it matched up, and you find the area, you export the height map. So basically, you are using Google Maps 3D view to see if that location, that area, has interesting enough information. And then you find the same area inside Terrain Party, and you download that height map data. And I use this method pretty much any time I use Terrain Party. So I recommend you do the same. This way you don't waste time trying to generate height maps so you know what the location will look like. I have two courses that I want to recommend to you. If you're a complete beginner with UE4, I have an essential beginner's guide to getting started with Unreal Engine 4 for complete beginners. This is the foundational course that will get you started with UE4. It has 38 videos and it covers over 7 hours of beginner material and after this you'll be ready to go into more advanced topics on UE4. And the second course is the second volume to Fundamentals and it is the Essential Beginner's Guide to Creating Landscapes in UE4. This will get you started for how to create and how to sculpt landscapes and for how to create landscape materials and paint textures in your landscape. So with these two courses you'll be way ahead of everyone else trying to get started with UE4. Both of these courses are packed with to the point precise instructions for how to get started with UE4 so you're no longer a beginner and for how to create landscapes so you can move on to create the environments that you always wanted to. You can download both of these courses right now by going through the link in the description box or going straight to worldofleveldesign.com store. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.